Nice, all right. Does anybody want to read or should I be the only one that reads it? I can read it. Yeah. Oh, nice. Go for it. I would love for it to have something <laughs> different. Desire. So this is the next part, desire. It's all page? Uh, for eight minutes of it. Very late. <laughs> Desire, when Edwin C. Barnes climbed down from the, freight, from the freight train in Orange County, New Jersey, more than 50 years ago, he may have resembled a tramp, but his thoughts were those of a king. As he made his way from the railroad tracks to a Thomas A. Edison's office, his mind was at work. He saw himself standing in Edison's presence. He heard himself asking, Mr. Edison, for an opportunity to carry on consuming obsession of a life, a burning desire to become a business associate of the great inventor. Barnes' desire was not a hope. It was not a wish. It was a keen, pulsating desire which transcended everything else. It was indefinite. A few years later, Edward C. Barnes again stood in front of Edison in the same office where he first met the inventor. This time, the desire had been translated into reality. He was in business with, with Edison, dominating the dream of his life of becoming a uh, becoming reality. Barnes succeeded because he chose to determine to determine his goal, to place him all his energy, all his willpower, all his effort, everything back to the goal. The man who burned bridges. Five years passed before the chance he had for seeking made its appearance to everyone except himself. He appeared only as a cog of Edison's business wheel. But in his own, but in his own mind, he was a partner of Edison every minute of the time. Every minute of time, from every day that he first went to work there. It is a remarkable illustration of the power of the uh, of a definite desire. Barnes, Barnes won his goal because he wanted to be a business manager and a business associate of Mr. Edison more than he wanted anything else. He created a plan in which he, attended the, which he attained that purpose, but he burned all the bridges behind him. He stood in his desire until he became the dominating obsession of his life. And finally, a fact. When he, wanted, when he went to Orange, he did not say to himself, I would try to induce Edison to give me a job of some sort. He said, I will see Edison and put him on a notice and I will become his business partner with him. He did not say, I will keep my eyes open for another opportunity just in case. I failed to get what I want in Edison's organization. He said, there's but one thing in this world that I'm determined to have. And that is a business, associate, a business association with Thomas A. Edison. I will burn all bridges behind me and stake my entire future in the ability to get what I want. He left himself no possibility, no way to retreat. He had to win or perish. That is all there was for Barnes' story of success. The spur of drives to riches. A long time ago, a great warrior faced a situation which made it necessary for him to make a decision which ensured his success on the battlefield. He was about to send his armies up against the most powerful foe whose, whim, whose men outnumbered him by, by numbers of his own. He loaded his soldiers into boats, sailed the enemies across country, unloaded soldiers and equipment, then gave orders to burn the ships and carry them away, addressing his men. Before the first battle, he said, you see the boats going up in smoke, that means that we cannot leave these shores alive unless we win. We now have a choice. We win or we perish. They won. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn the ships and get all sorts of retreat. Only by doing so can only one be assured of maintaining that state of mind known as burning desire to win, essentially to success. The morning after Chicago fire, the group of merchants stood in the uh, State Street looking for a smoke, uh, smoking remains of what had been their stores. They went into the conference, they went into a conference and decided they would, they would try to rebuild and leave Chicago, start all over a more promising section of the country. 
they reach a decision, all except one, to leave Chicago. The merchant who decided to stay and rebuild it, pointed fingers and remains in the store and said, gentlemen, on that very spot, I will build the world's greatest store, no matter how many times it may be burned down. That was almost a century ago. The store was built. It stands there today, a towering momentum of power and state of mind, knowing it as a burning desire. The easy thing for Marshall Field was to have, would have been exactly what his fellow merchants did. When the going gets hard, the future looked dis, uh, dismantled. They pulled up when we're going seemed easier. Mark, well, there's difference between Marshall Field and other merchants because the same difference which distinguishes practically all who succeed from those who fail. Every human who reaches the age of understanding of the purpose of money wishes for it, wishing all nothing but riches, but desiring riches with the state of mind that becomes an obsession then planning definite ways that means to acquire riches. The backing those plans persists, which does not recognize failure will bring riches. Wow, that was huge. All right, I think we have to update. Oh, he's there. I don't know why it's requesting for us to. Okay, you have to unlock it. Um, I know, but it was already on. Okay. Anyway, something came up to me. Uh, Real quick, um, it says we win or we perish, um, and it said that they went into the battlefield, and I guess they unloaded all the equipment and all the soldiers, and then they would just burn the ship. So it kind of didn't give them another option other to then win or either die. Um, something that happened to me when I first started in the real estate industry, my dad was completely against this. He was like Jesse, why would you get yourself into a business where you're only gonna make commission? And I was all like, man, you don't understand. Some of these guys are making like $30,000 a month and they don't even look as sharp as I am. And you know, always trying to do the comparison. Uh, <laughs> and my dad right away, he's all like, no, so bien transeros. You know, if you guys don't know what that means, you guys are watching the, the live and on Zoom. Transero means somebody that takes advantage of people for exchange of money. You know what I mean? Uh, and I told him, I said, no, you don't understand me. You don't know what commission is all about. Like the way that they interact with people, they. They're, they're teaching. So anyway, to make a very long story short, my dad was extremely upset and he was all like, well, if you take that commission job and you don't take the hourly job, don't talk to me no more. And I was all like, okay, I'm, this is a risk that I'm going to be willing to take because I kept seeing the amount of money these guys were making around me. And I'm like, man, these guys are making so much money. It's ridiculous. I'm over here struggling and barely have any money in my checking account or if, if any, if I don't, if it's not negative. Um, so to make a very long story short, my mom showed me a very, very huge lesson I was taking the bus all the way to Glendale to get the training that we do here every day. So it's kind of weird because I feel like when I first started in the industry, people got so comfortable, kind of like what we're going through with COVID-19, that people just stop showing up or people don't produce. And I see that a lot because I watch people on social media and I'm like, they're so unproductive right now. And a lot of people, they're making more money not working. That's the reality of stuff. So my mom did something to me because my mom and my dad always had mar marriage problems. And she says, something's going to make your dad really, really upset, but I'm going to do it because I need you to understand the concept of faith. And I'm not saying they're talking about faith in the book, but now that I listened to this, it brought back memories of, two, of what my mom did for me. And we went to the dealership. She put $1,500 down and she got me a car. She's all like, you keep taking the bus every day. And I know you're motivated to do this. And she says, you're never, ever going to perform or produce unless you're in a position where you feel like you're being choked to the level where you're going to be like, oh man, if I don't make this happen, something's going to go really, really bad. Does that make any sense? Let yes. Me, let me admit Jesse Garcia there. What's up, Jesse? Good morning. Keep track. People keep joining and I keep forgetting to add them. I tell them to do it. So anyway, so we went to the dealership and, I, and my mom was like telling me like, look, sometimes you need to have a little pressure in your life in order for you to succeed. And I didn't understand that because when I got the car payment, I'm like, man, $343. And at that moment, I'm like, $343 is a lot of money every single month. So I was panicking, but I understood now what she was trying to do is put me in a position where I had no other choice than to succeed. And that's what I want to tell you guys today in our market talk is that a lot of us find these little areas where, oh, I'm going to make a couple hundred dollars on that. 
I could take the I could take the gas off the off the pedal. I could take the foot off the gas pedal. Does that make any sense? Right. So what I want to tell you guys this morning, before I get into our market talk, because I think there's something that's very important for me to mention that's working out for me with the clients that I want you guys to do, is that you need to put yourself in a position where there is no plan B. If you're already thinking I got a second option, your mind mentally is always going to go to the second option. That's just a habit that we create. So you need to put yourself in a position. If right now you're living debt free, good for you. But if being debt free is making you unproductive, I'm not saying to go get some bad debt, but I'm saying put yourself in a position where you're like, hey, I need to make sure that I'm performing because the reality is that if you guys are not burning those ships, you guys are going to try to go back into the ships at the first sign of defeat. When somebody beats you, you're going to try to get on the ship and you're going to try to go back. And to be honest with you, there is no plan B. For me, there's no plan B. But anyway, that's enough of me for today um, as far as that's concerned. But I wanted to show you something that I did. You guys are getting leads that are very, very hot. Some of them are very, very cold. And some of them are not ready to be converted until you decide to make a decision to follow up at least 10 times with the customer. The customer wants this relationship with you guys. And we're not saying to do things out of the ordinary. I'm just saying you guys need to make sure that you guys are asking the right questions when you guys are in the process of selling things. And I always do this in my coaching. I always tell people, telling people what to do is not selling. You have to ask questions in order for you to get what you want. So I, I sat there yesterday and a family called me and they found me on the website and they found me from me generating leads. And would you believe that I had a 42 minute conversation during Mother's Day about their home purchase? They told me everything. And look how many notes I wrote. Obviously, you guys can see that I'm the type of guy that doodles once I start. <laughs> like once you get me into the conversation, I'm going to make all type of little notes. But it was very, very strange that they broke down to me their whole real estate portfolio. They sat there. Well, we sat there. I sat there and I was on the phone for 42 minutes. My wife was all like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just over here. These people are really, really committed to the process of buying a home and they want to buy the house with me. So what I want to tell you guys, if you guys are getting these relationships, forget about the real, the normal real estate mentality that, oh, I got to know all these people to make all this money. No, you don't. You just got to be willing to listen to individuals. And if you perform well, I guarantee you, like right now, the program, the lead program is starting to see that one person that you get, let's just say you close a deal that is like you do a very good job and they'll refer you now the family member. And now they're referring you guys the friend. So what I'm trying to get you guys is if you guys stick to your process and ask all the right questions, my job now is after taking all these notes, is to be very responsible and get onto the KB core and enter these notes. Because all I'm doing is relationship management. And look, something that I wanted to tell you, and I know I have a lot of resources, but just kind of curious to get my landscape done in my house. And I reached out to some gentlemen just because I wanted to see what the quote was like. And would you believe that he gave me a walkthrough of what he was doing? And I was all like, wow, that's very interesting. He went out of his way to show me the job. And then it's been two weeks and tell me why he has not called me once. I, I wasn't going to work with him regardless, which I had already made a conscious decision. But then I had put myself on the consumer shoe and I'm like, if I gave him the trust to tell him, this is what I want from you. And he came back and didn't follow up on me. What does that tell me as a consumer? Yeah, he's not that interested. He's not interested. The customer wants to make sure you guys are interested in doing business with them. If you tell the customer, I'm going to call you in 30 minutes, you better tell your phone. Because look, how many of you guys are holding smartphones? If there's anybody here with a flip phone, tell me because I will hook you up and I will, up and I will get you. Yeah, but look, the reality of stuff is that it's as easy as telling Siri or who's the Samsung, what's the Samsung platform? Do they have something that reminds you? Google. Google, oh, there you yeah. go. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Yeah, okay, Google. Reminder. Yeah. So it's as easy as like, hey, remind me to call customer A, A, B, C in 30 minutes. However, we get so busy doing busy work that we forget to call them in 30 minutes. And if I'm a consumer and that guy told me he was going to call me to give me a proposal of what he was going to do and he forgot, when he calls me two weeks later, I'm going to be like, hey, you know what? Even though I might just kind of accept him, I'm going to be like, ah. Your follow-up game is kind of weak to me. That's the perspective I do. And I tell people, when you guys are barely seeking your relationships, your marriage, your girlfriend, your wife, all that stuff, 
Do, do you guys can you guys go back and remember how much follow up game it took? Yeah, yeah. How consistent you were? I go back and I'm like, man, I had such a hard time, and I didn't give up at the first time of defeat. But you know the reason that happened is because I decided to show up in the in the ship. I showed up. You burned it up. I burned the ship, and yeah. I wasn't gonna get back on the ship until I knew I got a yes or no. That's the exact same right. approach you guys need to take with the customers. That that does that make any sense? Yeah. So today, when you guys get leads transferred to you guys. And if you guys are uh, watching this, and you guys are not part of the lead program yet, that's completely acceptable. Just reach out, but get those leads, call those leads, build relationship with those leads, write down the information of the leads, and then deliver what the customer wants with the, with the leads. Everybody's looking to buy or sell their house right now. And this is the one thing that I want to talk about today in the market update. One of my big friends, he is also in the mortgage industry. He's not even in this, in this state, but he is working in the New York area. And he says, Jesse, they're softening up the guidelines over here again. They're, they're going back post COVID, pre COVID-19. Pre is before, right? Yeah, post yeah, is yeah, after. Yeah. Pre COVID-19. And I'm like, really, what do you see? He's all like, you know how they messed up all your debt to income ratios and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah. And he's all like, they're going to take it back to normal again. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm not trying to be asleep. May 15th, everything goes back to normal and I'm barely getting started. I want to get back to May 15th and I'm like, man, I'm already like three escrows in. Where are you guys at? Because those guys are going to be scrambling. I refuse to have a group of sales professionals that are always trailing. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So what I want to share with you guys, it's going to come up to you guys. You decide how much you want to practice. I practiced yesterday because I felt like there was a huge need for, for sale by owners. I'm looking at so many people that are, that are talking to real estate agents and the real estate agents are not performing. So guess what? They're so, they're like, man, you know what? I can go and I can find my own house. I can go and I can sell my own house. And you know what that means to us as an industry? They don't need us. They don't need us. We need to make people need us. They need us because of this type of interaction. So what I need you guys to do today is when you guys are practicing your scripts, I need you to make the commitment to focus on caring for the consumer. Hey, sometimes a client doesn't qualify. David, Mr. Macias didn't qualify six months ago, but he's so much closer to qualifying right now. And he's, once he gets into an escrow, I'm not going to say no to a $10,000 check. Real talk. But you know why? You know why we change the dynamic of the way we think? Because we want it so, oh, here, slam dunk deal. If they're not ready to commit, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You guys are in the building relationship part of this business. And your job is just to get the lead, follow a specific procedure, and then execute. Start to set up your implement your implementation of a plan that's going to work for when you guys are starting to do your open houses. Like the minute that I already have a game plan, the minute that the open house comes, anybody that does not want to do an open house with us, I'm like, I don't want to work with them, period. Because that's our main source of income. I see all these people and they're hurting so much. And the reason they're hurting is because all they knew how to do was open houses. We are well-rounded sales professionals. That's what we are. So today I want you guys to make the commitment because I could sit here and make you guys practice and do everything. But I want you guys to make the commitment to practice of your, on your center of influence, lead follow-up script. You guys need to be calling way too many people right now that are way ready to make a decision to buy or sell. Guys, you know how many people are out of a job right now? A lot of people, right? 23 million. 23 million. So you don't think, even if I get 0.001% of that, what's 0.001% of 23 million? Even if that percentage gives me the opportunity to work with them, that still means like 23 listings. I'll take, I'll take those listings. I'll take those buyers. I'll take those sellers. I'll take those relationships. I'll take those refinance to pass them on to our lending team so that I can make some money on it. Why not? Why not do that? But the thing is that we have to think ahead so that we can make a conscious decision that we're going to win in this marketplace. And it starts off by being human with your customers. The money will always come. Does anybody have any comments that they want to ask or anybody that's online that wants to ask about about um, anything that they're seeing in the marketplace. No, no question. I had a client yesterday. Uh, I spoke to him. Uh, he, that uh, David, they went to go see David. Uh, it was King. What is it? Uh, King Teros, I think. Yeah. Uh, they called me back and they canceled the appointment for today uh -huh. because he said that they found out that the wife has a hundred thousand in in, um, uh, in in debt. And what? A hundred thousand in debt because uh, they have a sixty thousand dollar car and a forty thousand dollar. But the but the uncle that has the car, 
um, is almost done paying once. I tell them, you don't have a hundred thousand of it on mortgage debt. It, it's almost paid off. It's yeah, forty thousand dollars. But and some debt is good. Like card debt are is very normal debt to have. Like okay. people have card debt. So those are things that it's good for us to talk about because the average customer that we run their credit, they they're paying five, six hundred dollars every month. And and it's not just one, it's two of them because it's one household, two two cards. Does that make any sense? But it comes down to debt to income ratio. So some of that stuff is good debt that they, they can have. Um, but at the same time, what I would encourage you to do is like I said, run this relationship status do the pre-fall scripts, ask for their motivation. What, like right now, you know what I've been thinking about when I've been rating motivation? There's so many people getting pregnant right now. We need to attack all those people that need to make a decision to move from their one bedroom apartment into their two bedroom house. It's gonna cost about $450,000. I'll take those all day long because I know they need to move. If, I, if my wife was pregnant and it was my first kid, my first mentality was like, damn, we got a baby on the way, two bedroom house, starter house, let's make it happen. Does that make any sense to you guys? This is the one thing that I want to wrap up with because I have five more minutes right now. So when you guys are doing your prospecting blocks, there is prospecting blocks. Like right now when we finish this mastermind, if you're not on the phone calling people, you're probably hanging out on Instagram and on Facebook. Be very, very careful with that because that is contagious and that makes you unproductive. Does that make sense? The same thing with not structuring. Like today, I am kicking myself in the butt because I didn't put together my preparation for today as good as I wanted to. And could you believe that I found out today that I had no hair gel? So it took me 25 minutes to go through the whole house. I was telling Nico, hey, where's the gel? And he was all like, you know what? He told me I hid some. And I'm like, where'd you hide some? He says, you know that little server right before your room? He says, open that door all the way in the bottom. And it was literally like, I had to even wet it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and then scrape it. And it was all, it was all sticky. So I had to like, almost like, it was a process. I didn't prepare. I could have checked that on last night, but you know the reason I don't do that because I'm so excited about converting these leads that I'm going 100 miles per hour and I'm not mindful of the things that really matter. So this is what I want you guys to do and write it down if you guys are watching it. Very important. When you guys are in your prospecting blog, make sure you guys are writing a personal to-do list. You need to have a personal to-do list right next to you and write it down because if the reality of stuff is I've told you the story time and time again. People think that you guys, since you guys are self-employed, have the ability to do whatever you want to whenever you want to. My wife was notorious for calling me in the morning and saying, Jesse, the baby needs milk. Jesse, we don't have this. Jesse, we don't have that. Oh, I can't. I'm working. You ain't working. You're not getting paid by the hour. You better bring it. Does that make any sense? I would always stop, and that trip was two hours. And then all of a sudden, no wonder I was unproductive because nobody respected my job as a true self-employed business owner. Does that make sense to you guys? So if you guys are in the middle of prospecting, you got this hot lead that was generated by the company it was provided by you, and you got a milk for the baby, all I'm telling you is that your setup game the day before is very, very weak. Write it down on that personal to-do list on the left-hand side. Like for me, oh man, I forgot to pay Time Warner or, or Spectrum now, whatever it is. Write it down on my to-do list versus stopping and, oh, let me go make the full payment. Stopping is going to be about 30, 40 minutes. And by the time you get back, it's already 1 p.m. and you haven't done anything. That's why people are so unproductive. The second thing I want you guys to do is that when you guys are in your prospecting block, there's something called a work to-do list. Once you guys, and it's like when you're in a contract, you know that all of a sudden you get an email and you're prospecting and the listing agent is like, remove all the contingencies. 99.9% .9 of people will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your motivation for buying? Email comes in. Oh, okay, didn't work out. Click. Oh, oh man, contingency removal. I gotta go remove the contingencies. 45, two hours of contingency removals. Why? Why are you doing that? Why do you let people take you off your schedule? What makes them so important to take you off your schedule? Once you give people that control, I'm telling you, I started in the industry where clients used to stop and say, hey, Jesse, do this. I used to stop everything I was doing to go commit to them. And then all of a sudden, ah, we don't want the house no more. We're canceling. Can you check what's going on? Ah, we don't want the house no more. We're canceling. And then I would go back and it's like, damn, you know how many times I stopped prospecting because <laughs> you said you were going to do something and they canceled. And then I thought to myself, I just bought 10 customers over here because I was too busy babysitting this one. And the reason you guys do that, you guys want to know, write this down because your pipeline is weak. So right now, if I was you guys, and if you feel like you don't have enough escrows in your pipeline, I would write down a hundred times. My pipeline is full. My pipeline is full. People get scared during these times because their pipeline is weak. 
I was having a conversation with a gentleman this weekend that signed up to our coaching program. And he, he couldn't get over the fact that, oh man, his job is not a nine to five hourly, this, this, and that. And I told him, have you ever thought about having a full pipeline? And he says, yeah, I'm in internet sales and all this stuff. And I see all the receivables. I said, the exact same concept. You guys just need to manage the pipeline. How many people are in your actual pipeline? So when you're, you're catching yourself, prospecting block, calling, doing this, stopping, you're not going to get to this. I like, look, this is something that, I, that stood out to me. Yesterday when I received this phone call where I wrote 42 minutes of notes, I went into the kitchen. I told my wife, hey, happy Mother's Day. I know it's Mother's Day. We're doing the whole thing. This is fantastic. This is a very hot lead. I'm going to sit in the office. And I need you to tell the kids to be quiet. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shh, everybody be quiet. <laughs> I was there for 42 minutes. Everybody was very quiet. Because you know what? Those distractions come and come and come and come and come. And the normal me gets the distractions. All, all of a sudden, the distractions, I lose the motivation to even talk to the customer. Because I'm like, damn, these kids don't shut up, man. Like, all this stuff. So what I'm saying is mentally, you guys need to make sure that you guys are tuned in and have laser vision of what you're going to do. Finish what you're going to do and then strategically set up what you're going to do. But some of you guys don't have a personal to-do list. You don't have a work to-do list. And then all of a sudden, you go 12 hours doing everything and nothing. And then, then you wonder at the end of the month, why didn't I make a good pay? Do you guys, does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. So the other thing is that you guys are creators. I want you guys to remember, and I do this every single week, write down all the good things that happen in your transactions. What happened? You, you wrote your first offer. You, you, Teresa got loan doc signed this week. Those are all wonderful things that are happening that you guys, we're pushing to getting into escrows. We're following up on leads. All those things are very, very important, but you guys need to be consciously writing it. Got loan docs. Thank God. I, I did this. I, I finally converted some leads. Thank God. I did this. I did that. Write the good stuff versus letting your mind drown into something that's continuously negative. Does that make any sense to you guys? Yes. Practice it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this on you. And remember the last thing, because we're already past time, and that's my fault, is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every single day. Be very, very, very passionate about how many times you're doing it. The day that I, I miss my goal plan, my son already comes up to me. He's all like, hey, I didn't see you writing today. Like, you don't have goals today. And he's not saying it to throw it on my face. But to an eight-year-old child, they automatically think something's wrong. So then I ask myself, is something wrong with me that I'm not being consistent? And I'm like, absolutely. Go back and write down your goal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And for me, you know what my breakfast, lunch, and goal dinner right now? Is survive COVID-19. But I know that I'm in survival mode. I'm surviving, I'm surviving, I'm surviving. I was having this conversation yesterday. And my wife says, you haven't stopped ever since COVID-19. I said, I don't have the opportunity to stop. I wish I could stop. I want to stop. I told her, but wait till December. If I close as, as many escrows, you're going to have a full-time husband during December. We're going to celebrate the holidays together. You're going to have all the gifts that you want. You're going to have the best thing that you want. But I worked right through this. So it's all about celebrating the wins. But you guys have to keep working until we get that championship. We need to get that championship. If you don't get that championship and you're just celebrating wins all the time, I'm telling you, you're going to have a real estate career that's going to go up and down like that. Does that make any sense? So anyway, let's get up because I think I'm boring you guys. I'm super pumped up to work. Just wants to do it. Oh, you got the affirmation. Let's do this. I commit to working on my plan every day. I, I commit, commit to my plan every day. day. I commit to a can't do it attitude. I commit to a can't do it attitude. I commit to doing whatever it takes. I commit to doing whatever it takes. I commit to exceeding my customer's expectations. I commit to exceeding my customer's expectations. I commit to staying focused on what I need to do. I commit to staying focused on what I need to do. I commit to taking every opportunity all the way. I commit to taking every opportunity all the way. I commit to follow up on every opportunity. I commit to follow up on every opportunity. I commit to being highly ethical in every area of my life. I commit to being highly ethical in every area of my life. I commit to making changes when necessary. I commit to making changes when necessary. I commit to educating myself every day. I, I commit, commit to educating myself every day. day. I commit to training every day. I, I commit, commit to training, training every day. day. I commit to doing the right thing every day. I, I commit, commit to doing the right thing, thing every day. day. I commit to being the most positive person in the room. I commit to being the most positive person in the room. I commit to making stop making excuses and just making it happen. I commit to stop making excuses and just make it happen. I commit to making my dreams a reality. I commit to making my dreams a reality.